This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and what we have here is the Crosley of Classroom Record Players. This is an MPC Systems Classroom Record Player that I've already opened up. I believe this is from 96 or maybe early 97 based on date codes. As you can see, it uses the same basic turntable mechanism as some of the Crosley models with the little red needle and ceramic cartridge. We have controls for volume and power and tone, headphone jack, play and pause, and a three position switch for 45, 33, and 78. At least they were nice enough to include the 78 RPM speed. And then on the back we have our rear firing 4 by 10 inch speaker. Now you'll look at the expert craftsmanship here. This is the amplifier and you see how it's attached. You see it's not even in here straight. And that's how I got it and it looks like it came from the factory that way. Here's the amplifier and this looks just like the amplifier that was used in some later Audiotronics and Telex, which Telex ended up buying Audiotronics. Classroom record players from the late 80s, early 90s, so my suspicion is that whenever Telex got out of the classroom record player business, this MPC Systems, whoever that is, bought up all the uh, excess amplifiers that Audiotronics or Slash Telex had and and slapped them in these things. You can see the audio output transistors are riveted to the heat sink and they are actually surprisingly enough NTE transistors which is something you rarely see as a original equipment manufacturer. The NTE stuff is usually uh, usually for replacement use, but I guess some manufacturers obviously bought NTE transistors to put in their equipment. They probably got a good deal on them. And when we pull the motor board out, if you want to call it that, it looks like they bought the these mechanisms already likely attached to this plastic phono top assembly here. And if you look on the back here, you can see the provisions where the dust cover hinges would go. And you see the holes here where this would attach to an all-in-one stereo, most likely. So yeah, whoever this MPC Systems is, they... I've seen some of their record players as far back as the mid-70s, but by the mid to late 90s they were obviously buying floor sweepings from other manufacturers and throwing these things together. The nicest part about it is the speaker and that's about it. But at least the box is made out of wood. Now if we look at the power transformer you can see one end of it is dismounted but there's a bolt there on the mounting stud so that tells me this likely came from the factory that way. Sure enough a Friday job. We have our Malaysian made turntable assembly and our little DC motor there that looks like what Crosley uses. Here's our speed selector switch that they added with the with the trim pot piggybacked on it to enable 78 RPM speed. Yeah, a bit sloppy there. Now you know why I'm calling this the Crosley of Classroom Record Players. Now this thing will probably sound pretty good, but it's not built all that well. And on the speaker you can see where they used quick connect terminals, but then they sloppily soldered, especially that bottom one, soldered the terminals in place so you couldn't just uh, snip them off. They didn't even get the the screws in here correctly. That's the reason the, the transformer was only held in by one screw. They have the screws spaced too far apart. 
once you know what they did they put this screw on correctly and then they just tighten the nut down and washer over this one to hold it down to hold this side down well after 25 years that worked loose and caused the transformer to be flapping in the breeze under here oh and look at the blob of hot glue they have holding the uh, motor plug in place now on that note talking about this being like a Crosley if you look at the last Caliphone record player that was made, I think it was a model 1005 AV. I think Caliphone made it from about 2005 until about 2017 when they finally got out of the record player business. That one was nothing more than basically a rebadged Crosley. And if you look at the labels on one and the print style, you can tell that it was made in the same factory that makes Crosleys. It looks like they took one of the old portable stack-o-matic record player cases and instead of having a changer, they used a single play mechanism like this. I've never actually had my hands on one, but I always said if one came along for a cheap price, I'd grab it just to play with it. But Oh yeah, here's more hot glue on the wires that they have soldered to the printed circuit board. I should just scrap this thing and not even worry about it, but I'll try to get it playing just to hear what it sounds like. Okay, upon closer inspection, I noticed that uh, one of the screws was bent. The one, of course, that the transformer was actually still attached to, so after straightening them up and a little finagling, I was able to get the transformer back on here without having to redo the screw holes so it's on here now secure no flippy floppy anymore now I need to dig through my junk and try to find a belt that'll fit on this alright I dug out a belt off of a Crosley stack of matic it was a new belt that I ordered and then discovered the motor was bad so I'm probably going to put a BSR changer in that particular record player but that's another story for another video. Alright, it works, but the volume's not very loud. It sounds okay, it's just not very loud. Now, there's a gain pot on the amplifier, which we'll try adjusting that in a minute but these amplifiers are really designed for an 89T cartridge which is a lot harder, hotter than that Chiro Denshi cartridge but we'll try turning up the gain pot and see what happens okay I turned it wide open it was about three quarters of the way open and that helped but not very much and we also have what sounds like a bad bad ground somewhere notice when I activate the turntable it gets worse alright here's the Crosley Junk-O-Matic and my only motivation for even fooling with it is the novelty of a 21st century record changer but this is uh, for the exception of more plastic and a belt driven DC motor drive system versus an AC motor idler drive system for the older ones this is basically a copy of an old BSR changer okay I looked up the specs on this cartridge and the output voltage is 0.35 volts that's 0.35 volts in case you missed it the first time whereas this amplifier is designed to be used with an static 89T cartridge and its output is rated at 1.3 volts and once again that's 1.3 volts in case you missed it the first go around now if you do the math that's about a volt difference there this cartridge is considerably lower than output lower in output than what this amplifier is designed for now on some of the older 70s and 80s solid state audiotronics I've had success with using a lower output cartridge 
I was something in the range of 0.5 volts, but I had to turn the gain pot all the way up. And I also had to, let me show you here, there's a 100 ohm resistor here, brown, black, brown, that's connected to one end of this gain adjust pot. I've had to replace that resistor with, oh, say, a 47 ohm or a 68 ohm to get even more gain. And then they'll usually sound okay with a lower output cartridge than an 89T. But yeah, this was just a poorly designed record player all the way around, from the build quality to the choice of amplifier that was used. This was just strictly a case of whoever built this buying up a bunch of crap and throwing it together and sending it out the back door. Okay, here we are with a 47 ohm resistor in place, and we'll go test it and see how this does. But yeah, I don't claim to be no audio design engineer, but whoever came up with this blew it. Alright, that's about as good as it's going to get. It's better, but you know, it would still be better with the right cartridge in here. Now we got to find out where this ground issue is and fix that. Probably the best thing to do to solve this problem would be to put a 100 ohm resistor back in the amplifier and build a FET driver stage to go between the cartridge and the amplifier input. But quite frankly, I don't have all the stuff I need here to do that right now. I don't have time to do that right now, even if I had the stuff. And I'm just really not in the mood to do that right now. So. We're going to try to solve this ground loop problem and then we're going to put it back together and then it's going to go on the Facebook baby clothes and cell phone pages so it can sit there from now on. You've heard me talk about that before, how nobody around here wants to give you anything for something decent. But they managed to come up with money for liquor and smartphones and crystal meth and such reminds me of about 20 years ago when my mother was visiting a friend of hers in North Alabama and she was getting ready to have a yard sale and my mother saw some of the prices that she was putting on that stuff and she said uh, she told her she said you're never going to get these kind of prices for this stuff people people walk off like it's not even sitting like it's not even sitting there and she told my mother, said, uh, well, yeah, people will buy it, too. And people did buy it. And my mother told her, well, where we live, it's not that way. You could put, you could put a quarter on something, and they'd try to get it for ten cents. I remember one time my neighbor was having a yard sale, and they sold a lamp for a dollar, and the people who bought it took it home and it didn't work and they brought it back and demanded their dollar back and the sad thing is they probably spent more than a dollar's worth of gas going back over there to get that dollar and to me if I buy something at a yard sale even if you show it to me and I see that it works I've got sense enough to know that what I'm buying is used and it could it could conk out at any given time in other words, if I buy a stereo or a TV or whatever from you and uh, I see that it works, I buy it and I get it home and it craps out that afternoon, then oh well. I'm not going to go back on them and demand my money back. The way I see it, if people want a warranty on something, they need to go buy a new one. And then good luck with uh, trying to get them to honor the warranty if something goes wrong. Okay, it looks like I found a problem here. This is our red wire, which is our right channel. This is our white wire, which is our left channel. And they supposedly have those two channels wired in parallel for mono with the amplifier input here. And then this 
lead here is our ground. I have one one of my meter probes connected to circuit ground. That's good. That's where it's supposed to be. Our left is not getting a reading, which is good. However, our right is shorted to ground. So I think when they built this thing, they probably got the two black wires reversed. So we're going to have to go back in here and get our soldering iron and flip these two black wires around. Or should I say move the two black wires over here to the positive and then this will be our ground here. Okay, that took care of the problem. Got a little hum there, but that's from... That's, that's normal. It's not the loud, obnoxious buzz that we had. Okay, so the fun's not over with yet, though. Ended up having to, well, one of my leads for one of my channels, the exposed wire broke off, and when I went to restrip it, uh, pulled the whole insulation off of the wire, so rather than bother with that, I just cut that off, and I jumped the left and right to mono up here at the plug here. Now here's something else you'll love. This plug was held in place by a blob of hot glue. Well, the hot glue gave away and it came loose, but the hot glue has got to be there because this doesn't even, it won't even stay, it won't even stay in place without the hot glue. Probably what I should do is just get rid of this completely and just hard solder it in there. Okay, I eliminated that connector, and I'll show you why it wouldn't properly connect in just a minute. I also found some screws to fasten this cord compartment in place, and I'm now ready to put it all back together and hope I'm done with this. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad enough when you find bad workmanship from some technician working on something, but it's even worse when you find something that came to the factory that way and in this case you know obviously this thing never worked right from the get-go because I can look at it and tell that nobody has messed with this it came from the factory with the uh, the uh, right plus output of the cartridge connected to ground and that's what was causing our hum with our leads reversed like that but now we have the Plus is connected together, right and left, and then the right and left negatives connected together, so it should be happier now. Okay, we're back together, and hopefully it'll work. We'll test it in just a moment, but just to give you a recap of everything that went on here, in case I lost you in all of my babbling and rambling, rambling around, uh, first thing, we needed a belt got that replaced and we had low output, low volume as well as a bad hum in the audio. The reason for the low volume is because the amplifier used, which is obviously left over stock that they bought from Telex slash Audiotronics, was optimized for a cartridge with an output of about 1.3 volts. The is in the static 89T plug-in school record player cartridge but instead they chose to use a cartridge with an output of about 0.3 volts which is about a volt lower than what this amplifier really wants to see we compensated for that somewhat by turning the gain pot all the way up and replacing a 100 ohm resistor that's attached to one end of that gain pot uh, replacing it with a 47 ohm resistor However, it still does not sound as good as it would sound with an 89T cartridge. Now, I can't install such a cartridge in this tone arm because of the mounting. And even if I could install such a cartridge in this tone arm, it's been my experience. Those 89T cartridges don't, they don't do well 
and plastic cone arms are not complying enough. Now the only other option I could do, which would be the best option, would be to build a fat preamp stage to go between the cartridge and amplifier. But like I've already said, I'm really not wanting to fool with that right now. The hum problem was something that was a factory goof up. They had the wires from the, the uh, cartridge crossed. Normally, when you're using a stereo cartridge on a mono input, you should have the left plus and right plus connected together, and then the left minus and right minus connected together, but they had one of the pluses and the minuses uh, connected together, and we reversed those, and that greatly reduced our hum to a reasonable level. And then that brings us to the plug that we had to hard solder. We had to eliminate and hard solder. And I said a few minutes ago I would show you that. Let's see, we have some help here. Alright, here's the plug that I sort of mutilated getting it off the circuit board. And here's the Crosley spy plane to fly over to see what I'm up to. Alright, anyway, here's the type of plug. It's a common plug and the mating female plug that connects to it is designed to firmly plug into this and stay locked into place. Well, it's all fine and good when you're using the correct type of female plug, but this type of female plug that they used had no kind of locking pin or nothing on it. So as you can see, it just loosely fits into the male plug. Now the way they got around that was putting a blob of hot glue on it. Well, during the course of working on it, that hot glue gave loose and the plug just fell out. Wouldn't stay in the... wouldn't stay mated to the other end there. Well, here it comes again. So we simply removed the male plug from the... Uh, our male socket would be a more appropriate term from the circuit board. And then we cut off the female plug and just stripped the wires back and hardwired them to the circuit board. The cartridge, it may be a for real Chuo Denshi, it may be a Chinese clone. This was made in about 96 or 97, and that's when the Chinese started making clones of these cartridges and the mechanisms themselves. But being a three-speed turntable, three-speed record player, it should technically have a cartridge with a LP78 flip needle in it. There is a cartridge I could buy to convert this one over to one that does have an LP78 flip needle, and I think that cartridge has slightly more output. If I was planning on keeping this, I would probably do that, but I'm not going to invest any more money in this because, like I said, the people around here don't want to give you nothing for anything anyhow, so why should I invest more money in something that I'm not going to be able to recoup? So, since I've got nicer players than this that'll play 78, and since I know the majority of the buying public on a, only want to play LPs and 45s, then we're just going to leave it like this. Alright, LP 45. Have you heard the story of the hot rod race with the Fords and Lincolns we set in the face? That story is true. I'm here to say I was driving that Model A. And yeah, I probably need to put my strobe disc on this and go inside and adjust the pots. I think it's running a bit fast, which I'm not surprised by. And a microgroove 78. Honestly, I may end up just scrapping this for parts because it's such a poor quality piece of crap. Earlier I was talking about Califone's last effort at a classroom record player it was basically a rebadged Crosley with this same type of turntable mechanism. I failed to mention that they also had one back in the 80s, late 80s, that had this type of turntable mechanism. But it was actually a better record player than this one. On that particular one, they actually 
used an amplifier that was more correctly matched to the Chilo Denshi cartridge that it used and that one didn't sound too bad in fact I have one down there that buried here somewhere that I ended up robbing the speaker out of to put in something else so I may end up taking the speaker out of this one and putting in the caliphone and the uh, little tone arm clip was broken on the caliphone here's a tone arm clip right here and I think the tone arm tube was bent on the caliphone so I might end up taking the tone arm tube off of this and putting on the caliphone and at least we'll have a workable record player that's actually halfway decent unlike this piece of crap garbage the caliphone as I remember is only two speed but you know I can modify it to run at 33, 45, and 78. That shouldn't be an issue. So there you go. A Junker Crosley style MPC record player. Okay, I can't find my strobe card, so I just went in and tried to adjust the pitch control pots, which it's really not a good idea to do it by ear, but I did. It's still not exactly right, but I'm to the point I really don't give a rip trying to adjust this thing with holding the motor board in a position where to play the record and get under here with a screwdriver. And if you hold the screwdriver slightly not just right, the darn motor goes into high gear. <laughs> Now I might have got the 78 a little bit too fast, but like I said, I'm to the point I don't care. This is a poorly designed piece of junk, and I'm about to say something you may never hear me say again. I've seen some modern Crosley stuff that I think was actually better than this piece of crap, so I'm not worried about the speed. I'm probably going to chop it up for parts or either just drop it off the thrift store and let somebody else worry with it. What they should have, and they'll never do it this way because that would be too easy, they should have three little holes right here to access three trim pots that are on a little circuit board. So if you need to adjust the speed, you don't even have to take the, take the thing apart. You just stick your screwdriver down in there and adjust each pot for the right speed, for the proper speed, pitch, and then you're done. It ain't none of this trying to hold the thing up in the, with one hand and, and keep an eye on a strobe disc or, or listen to the pitch of a record playing while you're under there with the other hand trying to... Uh, adjust the pots on the motor and trying to keep the screwdriver perfectly straight so you don't short the thing out and cause the motor to go into high gear. But yeah, give me a good old item or wheel driven caliphone or audiotronics or newcomb any day of the week. This crap, forget it. Or another thing I could do is save this for an, for an EOL video. That would be appropriate for this. Okay, upon further listening, I could tell that the audio was a bit distorted. It sounded like a rubbing speaker voice call. However, that was not the problem, so the only thing I could figure is maybe the amp didn't like that 47-ohm resistor that I put in place of a 100-ohm. That was a little low. I usually go with 68 or 82 in that, in that position whenever I have to modify one of those amps. So I went back to 100 ohms, and that cleared the distortion up, but the audio was still weak, of course. Well, I remembered I had one of the Chinese knockoff cartridges out of a Crosley Cruiser that I junked, and I believe those cartridges are a little bit hotter than the uh, original Chuo Denshi cartridges, so I put one of those in here. And it indeed is hotter, and the record player sounds better. And I went back in and tweaked down the 78 pot to get the 
the speed mowing line. I still can't find my strobe disc. I guess I need to go print one up. But like I said previously, adjusting those pots is a bit difficult when you're trying to hold the record turntable mechanism up in a position where you can either play a record or look at a strobe disc and reach under there to adjust the pots. And the way they have that 78 pot just piggybacked onto the speed selector switch via one leg of the pot, it makes it very difficult to stick a screwdriver in there. It would have been better for them to have uh, mounted the switch in the pot to a little PC board and in that way you could adjust it without the switch moving on you. Uh, another thing, this tone arm does track a little bit on the hefty side. Uh, my gauge has also disappeared so I really can't tell you what the pressure is but it's a bit on the heavy side. There is a little counterbalance spring back under here but that really doesn't do a whole lot. I really need to add a counterweight to the back of the tone arm, but there's not a lot of clearance back here, so you know one solution to one problem creates a, another problem entirely. If I end up keeping this, I'm going to swap this cartridge out with one with a flip needle, but I don't know. I may just put this on Facebook for about 25 bucks. That'll cover my expenses on it. You know, I bought it, I had my fun with it, and time to move it on to somebody else. But, quite frankly, like I've already talked about, getting $25 out of these folks around here is like pulling, hen pulling hen's teeth, unless it's a, for a six-pack of beer, or, well, it may take more than a six-pack, but you get, you get where I'm going. They come up with the money for beer and drugs and telephones and that sort of thing, but you know, something like this, they expect it to be five bucks. Baby with a honeycomb be my song. Got a hanky hair on a piece of bone and made a work get stuck in the honeycomb. Well, a honeycomb be my baby with a honeycomb be my song. And that's for I travel these and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it God's way. Regrets, I've had a few. But that's about all I'm going to do to this. If you're wondering who that guy singing, singing is, it's the late Dr. Jim Matthews known as the Singing Surgeon from Meridian, Mississippi. He was a doctor at Rush Hospital who sang and did Elvis impersonations on the side. And This is one of his records. His records and tapes seem to turn up everywhere around here. I think he handed them out to just about everybody. Okay, well, that about does it for the MPC record player. I've done about all I'm going to do to it. Probably going up for sale on Facebook for about, I'll put about 30 bucks on it and see what happens. And if it don't sell, then, you know, I don't know what I'll do with it. And like I said earlier, I may end up chopping it up for parts. Alright, hope you got something out of all of this and more to come later.